Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got yet another mini PC to take a look at today. This one is a mini, mini PC, and it really surprised me by its overall performance. This is the GMK Tech Nuckbox G5, and it is powered by an Intel N97 processor. And believe it or not, the N97 actually performs a little better than the N100 we have been looking at inside of their G3 Nuckbox, that is one of my favorite mini PCs at the moment. So we're going to take a look at what this little computer is all about and what it can do in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that GMK Tech sent this to the channel free of charge. However, no other compensation was received. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this little computer is all about. Now, there are two price points on this at the time I'm recording this video. For $149, you can get one of these with 256 gigabytes of storage. If you opt for the 512 gigabyte version, it is about $200, but the specs are otherwise the same inside of the computer. Now, as mentioned, this has the N97 processor from Intel for its main CPU and graphics. All of these models have 12 gigabytes of soldered RAM on board and it's DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM, so it's a little faster than some of the other N100 devices we've looked at recently. The storage is upgradable on here. If you flip it over and unscrew the bottom panel, you can swap out the M.2 drive. It is a 2242 drive, so you will have to look for one of those shorter ones there, as you can see. And you can also uh, use, in addition to an M SATA, what looks like a PCI Express NVMe drive in there as well if you want. So you do have a little bit of storage flexibility, but there's only one storage slot on this. Meanwhile, the N100 base device we've been playing with over the last couple of weeks has two storage bays, so you could have two hard drives installed. This one is a little more constrained, and of course you can only upgrade the storage and not the memory. But still, 12 gigs is enough for, I think, what most people might do with one of these computers. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you don't have many to choose from on here. You do have two USB 3 ports here in the front. These all run at five gigabits per second each. On the side here, you have a SD card slot. This will take cards up to 512 gigabytes in size. You have a Kensington lock slot over here. And then on the back, you have a USB type C port, but this is for power only. It doesn't work for data or video, unfortunately. I did test that to see if we could do more with that port, but all it does is take in power. You do, though, get two HDMI outputs. They can run at up to 4K at 60 hertz, and you'll see some performance examples running at 4K in a few minutes out of it. It is pretty snappy, as you will see. This is gigabit ethernet. Many of these mini PCs have 2.5 gig ethernet, but not this one, so just gigabit on this one here. And then you have an additional USB 3 port along with the headphone microphone jack. There is a fan on board. It will get a little bit noisy, but it's not too loud. And you'll hear that kick on a little more frequently than some of the larger PCs that have a little more room to dissipate heat. But overall, the fan wasn't too distracting, but it was audible when I was using more demanding software. So that is the lay of the land here. Why don't we plug it in and see how it performs? All right, why don't we start off with a little web browsing here. We will load up the Google Chrome browser. And I should add that we are currently running the machine at 4K 60 Hertz, so you can get a feel for what it might look like on a modern display. And surprisingly, it's keeping up. It's not all that laggy here. It feels pretty responsive. If we were to go to 1080p, which I can do right now, you might see a little bit of an increase in performance here, but not all that much. So I think this is actually pretty usable as a 4K workstation, and if you have a monitor that runs at a lower resolution, it might even do a little bit better. Um, but here, we'll visit the same website now at 1080p, and it does feel a little bit quicker, maybe. It's rendering in a bit faster, so uh, you can try to figure out what resolution works best for your particular environment. But overall, I found this to be a very nicely performing machine for doing the basics here, like web browsing. A little bit earlier, we also took a look at some YouTube videos, and I pulled up a 4K60 video from my channel. And although we had a couple of drop frames when things first started, once everything settled down, it was able to play back that video perfectly at, again, 4K60 Hertz without any further drop frames. So overall, for 
video consumption, whether it be YouTube, Twitch, or other services, I think you will have a very good experience with this little mini PC. And on version 3.0 of the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 10.2. And that is pretty much right within the margin of error with what we saw on the Intel N100 based G3 computer we looked at recently. You can also see it's holding its own against the i3 variant of this processor too. So all in very good web browsing performance. Now, one of the things that these little computers excel at, if you pardon the pun, is getting some Microsoft Office applications up and running. So why don't we load up Microsoft Word here running at 4K60 and see how it does with a document with some graphics and text in it. And as you can see here, it loaded everything up very quickly. I can move my uh, head around here and the text reflows quite swiftly here. And I think if you were looking to buy a bunch of computers for the office for workstations, these are gonna be just fine if this is mostly what you're doing. You don't really need to spend more than that these days to have an effective office machine. And this will certainly get the job done here. So all in a pretty nice experience even at 4K 60 Hertz. Now, one thing that these mini PCs usually come with are brackets to mount the computers on the back of a display like this one. This one has holes for a bracket to do that, but it did not come with a Visa bracket in the box. So at least as far as what I saw from my box, you're not gonna be able to mount this easily on the back of a display, but it is a pretty cute little device to have sitting on your desk, I think. But now let's push this little guy a little bit harder with some games. I've got a bunch to check out, so let's take a look. So we're gonna start off here with what they call a boomer shooter. This is the remaster of Dark Forces, a very popular Star Wars game from the 90s. So this is not the original game, but the remaster for modern computers. And here we're running it at 1080p at the basic settings, and we are getting 60 frames per second most of the time here on this little tiny mini PC. That's pretty darn good. Uh, I think, for something at this price point. Additionally, I loaded up GTA 5. This is at a 720p resolution at the absolute lowest settings. Inside of a building, we were getting close to 60 frames per second, but we got into the 40-ish territory when we got into the car and into the city. This game often has variable frame rates depending on what's going on in the game, but I never saw it go lower than 30 in my testing, so it's actually playable. Now, of course, GTA 5 is an older game at this point, but it's a very rich game that can really suck up a lot of time, and you can have a lot of fun playing it natively on this computer, which is pretty amazing, I think. I also booted up the PCSX2 emulator and played some PlayStation 2 on it, running one of my favorite games here, Burnout Revenge. And here we were running at the default settings and getting easily 60 frames per second almost all of the time. So you can get a full speed PS2 experience here. And you might be able to squeeze a little more resolution out of the emulator too if you tweak some settings a bit more. So all in surprisingly good performance for such a small footprint. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 487. And that puts this slightly above what we've been seeing out of some of these Intel N100 base machines. That's because the N97 is slightly quicker. So we did pretty well on that test. But if you wanted something that was more robust for gaming and modern emulation, you might want to look at some Ryzen base machines or the new Intel Core Ultra base machines. Those cost a little bit more, but as you can see there on the list, an older one like the B-Link Sur 4 does dramatically outperform this little guy. But I think if you were looking for something super inexpensive to play around with, this might be worth considering, especially for 8 and 16-bit game emulation. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 97.9%. That means that even under heavy sustained load, this little computer will be able to maintain its performance. You will hear the little fan going on this because it is a smaller fan than what you might get in a larger mini PC, which means it has to turn faster. Um, but it is able to keep the computer cool enough to operate efficiently, which is great to see. Now, as far as its Windows uh, version is concerned, it comes with Windows 11 Pro, like many of these mini PCs are coming with. And that is often surprising, given how much Windows 11 Pro costs in the store to purchase a license at retail. And I think what these folks are doing is they are grabbing these OEM licenses and assigning them to these computers. I'm not sure if it's legit or not, but the activation state 
on this checks out and it doesn't have any issues regarding activation. I did also run a number of virus and malware checkers as I've been doing lately on these mini PCs and everything checks out here as well. I didn't detect anything out of the ordinary on it. The only thing I did notice is that when I first set it up, it did not ask me for my Microsoft account. It allowed me to create a local account. And this behavior is something I've seen on a bunch of other mini PCs lately that also come with Windows 11 Pro licenses. But of course, you can attach your Microsoft account to it later. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux performance. I booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu, and as you can see, everything looks and feels just fine on here. That includes audio, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, everything just sprung to life here and started working without issue and I found performance on par with what I experienced on the Windows side. So this might be a fun project to uh, play around with alternative operating systems if you want. One other neat thing these things are really good for is Plex serving because these Intel processors are very well tuned for hardware transcoding of video. And just the other day, we looked at the N100 based machine to see how well it could perform as a Plex server. And I think this one will perform equally well. The only limitations on this one is that you don't have a lot of options for internal storage expansion. You'll have to attach USB drives to it. But for a small, quick and dirty Plex server, this should do quite well along with other uh, types of media serving software that might be out there. And for those of you that are curious, it is running with Realtek networking hardware on board. That includes the Ethernet and the Wi-Fi here. It is only AC Wi-Fi. It is not Wi-Fi 6 but it is easy enough to swap out that Wi-Fi adapter if you need to. Right underneath the hood there, if you take that metal plate off, the Wi-Fi is socketed into one of the two PCI Express slots on the top of the computer and you can put in something better if you want. So overall, I am quite pleased with this little computer. It is a little more limiting than what you might get out of some of the larger ones that offer more storage capabilities and have more functional USB ports on board, but for a very inexpensive, very small device. I think you'll have a lot of fun with this machine as kind of a secondary computer for playing around with Linux or even office workstations. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.